you ever wondered how an egg such as this can develop into a chicken? In today's lab, we will conduct an experiment to learn about the development of chicken embryos. Fertilized chicken eggs take about 21 days to develop and then hatch. During those 21 days, the embryo grows from a single-celled zygote to a fully developed chick. We are going to look at the embryo at several stages in its development. In order to facilitate the development of the chicken embryo, we have used an incubator to keep the eggs at a constant 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 37.8 degrees Celsius. Now that the eggs have been incubating for 24 hours, let's examine one to see the developing embryo. At this stage in its development, the embryo is very tiny and it is embedded in the yolk of the egg. So we need to take some steps to help us see the embryo. Remember, these eggs have been fertilized, so they are not like the eggs you buy at the grocery store. We need to immerse the egg in a culture dish containing a saline solution, or salt water, that has been warmed to the same temperature as the egg, which, if you recall, is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, or 37.8 degrees Celsius. After choosing an egg, tap the egg gently on the table to crack open the shell. Once the shell is cracked, immerse it in the saline solution and gently pull the shell open a little to allow the saline solution to enter the shell. Let that sit for about 60 seconds. Now that we have allowed the saline solution to saturate the egg, we need to separate the shell from the egg. Great! Now that we have separated the egg from the shell, let's identify some of the embryonic structures. The yellow part of the egg is called the yolk. The yolk is contained in a membrane called the yolk membrane. The clear, thick liquid surrounding the yolk is called albumin. Notice the small white circle in the center of the yolk. This is called the blastoderm. The blastoderm is the group of cells that form the chicken embryo. In a few minutes, we will look at the blastoderm under a microscope so we can see some of its details. Beside the yolk is a strand of white tissue. This is called the chalaza. There is another chalaza on the opposite side of the yolk. The two chalazae are strands of protein. As you can see in this illustration, the chalazae hold the egg in place while it is in the shell. Next, we must add some drops of neutral red solution. Neutral red solution is a dye that will adhere to the tissue of the blastoderm to let us see it more clearly under the microscope. Use the dropper to add enough neutral red solution to cover the yolk. It should take about 30 drops. Be careful not to let the dropper touch the solution because this could contaminate the solution in the bottle. We need to let the solution sit for five minutes. This will allow the neutral red solution to be absorbed into the tissue of the blastoderm. Notice that the blastoderm is stained a darker red than the yolk. Now, we need to remove the blastoderm from the yolk and put it in a petri dish so we can look at it under the stereo microscope. First, we need to grab one of the chalazae. It may not be possible to see the chalaza through the neutral red solution, but if we use tweezers, we can probe around until we grab it. We can tell we have it when we pull on it and the yolk moves with it. Next, while holding the yolk in place with the chalaza with one hand, we need to cut the yolk membrane around the blastoderm with several quick incisions. We must be careful not to cut the blastoderm while doing this, or the embryo could be damaged. We can tell where the incisions have been made because the exposed yolk will not be stained. 
After cutting the blastoderm free of the yolk membrane, we use the tweezers to lift the blastoderm out of the saline solution and place it in a petri dish. As careful as we were separating the blastoderm from the yolk, some of the yolk is still mixed in with the blastoderm. So we need to separate the yolk from the blastoderm. To help us do that, we first need to add a small amount of saline solution. Since the blastoderm is heavily stained, we can distinguish it from the yolk, which should not absorb as much stain. We should withdraw as much of the saline solution and yolk from the petri dish as we can. We don't want the water to reflect light and cause a glare when we put the blastoderm under the stereo microscope. We must be careful not to withdraw any of the blastoderm. Now, we'll place the petri dish containing the blastoderm onto the stage of the stereo microscope. Under the microscope, the blastoderm looks like this. The blastoderm looks like a short tube surrounded by a flat disc. The tube is the embryo, and the disc surrounding the embryo is the area pellucida. The area pellucida forms the circulatory system of the chick. At the top of the embryo is a flap of tissue called the neural crest. This is the beginning of the chick's brain. Running the length of the embryo is a dark line called the neural groove. This is the beginning of the chick's spinal cord. In the center of the neural groove is a light line called the primitive streak. The primitive streak is a row of cells that form the digestive organs, nervous system, and muscles of the chick. About halfway down the neural groove, we see two rows of round structures, one row on each side of the neural groove. These are called somites, and they are clusters of cells that will develop into the bones, ligaments, and tendons of the chick. This concludes our examination of a chicken embryo that has been developing for 24 hours. We will allow the remaining eggs to develop a little longer before we take another look. After the eggs have incubated for 48 hours, we are ready to see the next stage in the development of the chicken embryo. To see the embryo, we need to follow the same steps we followed to prepare the 24-hour embryo. Here is what the chicken embryo looks like after 48 hours in the incubator. At the interior end of the embryo, we can see that the neural fold is developing into the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain of the chick. Behind the brain, we can see the developing eye and ear. Descending from the brain on the left side of the image is the spinal cord. Near the midsection of the embryo on the right side of the image, we can see the heart. We can still see the somites in this stage of development. The tail bud, which will become the chick's tail and tail feathers, is also developing. Now, we will look at the embryo after it has been in the incubator for 72 hours. Notice that the brain, eyes, ears, and spinal cord are more developed. Somites are still visible. Wing buds, which will become wings, and leg buds, which will become legs, are also visible. The tail bud has grown longer. The heart is also more developed, and two sets of blood vessels, the vitalin veins and the vitalin arteries, have formed. The vitalin arteries draw nourishment from the yolk and pass it into the developing circulatory system. The vitalin veins carry waste from the embryo into the yolk. It will take about 21 days for a chick to fully develop and then hatch from its egg. It is amazing how a single cell can develop into a chicken in less than a month. Many other animals develop in a similar manner from a single cell to an embryo to a fully developed animal. In our next lab, we will begin an introduction to anatomy and dissection. 
At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities.